Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video in programming the finite element method using MATLAB. In this video we're going to continue our STR controller adventures and we're going to continue talking about adding STR nodes. There is one thing that has not been done before which is basically to store the node into the STR nodes. Also there's something else that needs to be done which is to check if you have duplicate nodes or not. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. First of all, it's a bit easy task. If you want to add the node to the STR nodes here, all you have to do is to increase it. Now, this is not the best programming way of doing things. As a matter of fact, MATLAB loves pre-allocating instead of increasing the size every time. It hates the C sharp list.add command that you know from C sharp. It basically hates it, but I'm gonna use it now because I want to keep things simple. I maybe later revisit it to improve its performance. So here I will basically add it by saying object.str nodes. So whatever you have here is going to equal whatever you had and comma, I'm going to add the new thing. So this means that the storage is gonna equal whatever you had plus the new thing. So let's see this in action. I will save the str controller, go to main and I will basically run. Now, once again, it shows you three nodes. And if you double click on the controller in the workspace, you can see that the STR nodes are one times three nodes. If you double click on that, you can see a vector of three nodes. You can double click on anyone and you can see the values inside it. Pretty nifty. This is my storage system, which is not very performance effective, but the problem here is I don't know the number of nodes I have beforehand. So I cannot pre-allocate the memory. I need to modify the memory every time. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me in memory problems in MATLAB, but I don't think I'm using memory intensive items. My items are just ID and X and X, it's just some bytes. And your memory is usually in gigabytes. Now I have this, so let's just check for duplicate nodes. How do I check for duplicate nodes? Well, I need to run a loop and check if anybody of the loop is similar coordinates of what you're adding. So in the for loop. Now since I open a for loop, I need to end the for loop. So in the for loop, I am going to start with an index that equals one. And by the way, this is where you might start getting confused. MATLAB starts its indices at one, not at zero. So index one is the first index, despite the fact that in most programming languages, zero is the first index, but MATLAB doesn't work like that. So for index one, until the object or the length means the number of object, just str nodes. So we're gonna cycle through those things, meaning you're gonna start an index at one and you're gonna go all the way until all the str nodes. This is basically the equivalent of saying for integer i equals one in this case, because basically we're talking about one, i less than or equals the number or the length basically, or I think it's called dot count, uh, str nodes dot count in C sharp and I++. This command is similar to this. Remember, the indices start at one and at, at the length. It's kind of different because in C-sharp, we would put zero and less than without equals. This needs time to get used to, but I hope I'm able to convince you with this uh, similarity. Okay, so I equals one to length str node. Now I need to fish out the str node. So I will say here, existing node equals, I will say object to the str nodes of i. So I'm fishing it out. Once again, a major difference in MATLAB is that you use this to fish out something from a vector, not this, because this is used in C sharp and C. We're using parentheses for that. Now we have the existing node and we have the xyz. I must make sure that the x here and the y here and the z here are not the same, because if they are the same, then I must refuse adding a new node. I will basically do the check here. Now, numerically speaking, you cannot check equality here because there are numerical problems. Usually how we do this is we check if they are very close to each other. How we do this? Let me show you the typical check that we do. I would say if, now this is an equality check, you shouldn't do that, but I will do it anyway. So I will say here, if the existing node dot x equals x and the existing node dot y equals y and the existing node dot z equals z 
then I found it. I will say here display node exists just to check something. This is my first step now. So let's try this in action. Now I still haven't denied the addition. I just want to check if it sees it. So I go to main here and I'll define me two nodes at the same coordinates. I will run and I get an error. OBH, I think it should be OBG. Oh, this is a typo, fine. Let's run again. Okay, at least it detects that the node exists. So far, so good. Now what happens if the node exists? I would say node, the output is gonna be the existing node and I'm gonna break out. Is there a return function? I think it will return. Let's try this. So I stop here and run. No, not this one, I run the main. So this is the second node, this is the second node, right? Yeah, that's the second node. And it exists, so it should return. Yes, it does. Okay, it seems everything is fine. Yeah, and it makes perfect sense. Let me explain to you what happened just now. Let's run again without any breakpoints. Just remove it, and let's take a look what happens. In the beginning, we initialize the controller. Then we define node one, which works perfectly. Then we define node two, which doesn't work because it exists already, so it triggers the warning, node exists. Then we define node three. However, the controller has only defined one node, so node three became the ID number two because of the duplication protection, meaning that I only have two nodes. And this makes sense. Those three nodes should only be able to define two nodes, one of them at zeros and one of them at 10, 0, 0. It's not supposed to be three nodes because one of them is duplicate. That's perfect, I guess. So I think I will remove this warning. Now there's a problem here numerically speaking because this is a problem because there's something called numerical accuracy. And I want to explain. Like sometimes you would have like a number 499999 and you want, they want to compare it with five. And for you, this is a true comparison because 4.9999 is almost five. So it would basically consider them the same. However, the computer doesn't. It gives you a logical zero, which means no, they're not equal. Now, sometimes when you mesh things or when you calculate things, you might end up with numerical accuracy issues that give you a 4.9999999 instead of five. And in that case, you want to capture that. So instead of equality, which is always a dangerous thing, I want to use the discrete mathematics epsilon. So I will say, basically, that two values are equal if they are very close to each other. Now, how do I define very close? First of all, I need to define here a constant called epsilon. And this epsilon shall be one times 10 to the power minus six. This means it's gonna be zero point five zeros or something, one, it's a very small value. Now, I will ask, if they are close to each other. So here I will say, if absolute value of this minus this is less than the epsilon value. So think about it. 4.99999 minus five is this value. And because this value is very small, I need of course to get the absolute value of that. This is very small. So in that case, I consider those two values equal. This and this are equal, so I'll keep it. And this epsilon must have an object, so I will. Uh, I think I will call it epsilon like this with capital. And now I must uh, define the object here, so object dot epsilon, and I must rinse and repeat here. So I must do the same thing everywhere. Now you cannot simply hit the enter key in MATLAB. You have to put triple dots if you want to split uh, sentences. I will copy this and paste it two times. One of them is the Y check, and one of them is the Z check. This will have the same effect as an equality check, but includes the numerical errors. Let's run the main again. You can see nothing has changed. Let me remind you again, I am basically comparing if the values are very close to consider them equal, then those are equal. And of course, uh, here's the thing. This doesn't get defined, but this gets defined, or this, for example because the if statement says all of them must be equal to each other. So this would pass through. If you say run, you can see one, two, three, and three nodes. So yeah, I think we've done a great job in modifying and defining our nodes. So I think we have done enough for today. 
And of course, once again, the link to the files here is going to be uh, available to my dear channel members. And of course, you could just write, uh, write with me and then have your own uh, version of the code. So yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed. And in the end, I want to give a unique size shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart as the support of the channel is priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. In the end, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing because it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye bye.